Let's get started with Matt Kawahara. Hi, Mark. Um, thanks very much for uh, for hopping on with us here. Um, first of all, uh, what um, what was your reaction when you uh, you know heard that uh, a deal had been reached and you can kind of just really start getting to work here and, and getting in touch with players? Going down the list to see which player I could call first um, and making sure I had permission to call uh, when the deal got done. Obviously, there there was some time to, to finalize it, so there was a waiting period. Um, you know, before we could reach out to the players, we got word around. A little after four o'clock West Coast time that we could contact our, our players. And uh, it was great. It was exciting. Um, took full advantage of it yesterday to reach out to as many guys as I could and, and, and make contact. Were you able to, to get in touch with um, just about everybody? Um, are you still kind of waiting to hear from guys? And, and what was the best uh, best exchange that you've had so far? <laughs> just the first conversation, um, you know, hearing, hearing the excitement of just the, the voice on the other end of the line uh, about getting started, um, you know, the opportunity to, to get to spring training and start playing baseball. Um, you know, I, I've reached just about the full roster. Obviously, there's some, you know, time change uh, issues. There's uh, guys traveling in from, from Latin America uh, that, that we're trying to connect with, and, and we will uh, once, they, once they get their feet on the ground here. Who was that first uh, conversation with? Uh, well, that's interesting you say that because there's uh, there's a little bit of an argument about uh, the fact that I didn't call the Titan first uh, in Matt Chapman and uh, reached out reached out to Matt Olson, uh, you know, first uh, connected with him and uh, had a good conversation with Matt um, and then went down the, the line uh, with all the guys. So, uh, you know, it's obviously uh, not anyone in particular that became that first call by choice. It was just the first one on my list that I hit dial and, and uh, connected with. Let's go to Manolo. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Uh, hey, Mark. Congratulations once more. And this is a very uh, important moment in your career to take over the Oakland Athletics. What do you consider is going to be the biggest challenge in this kind of special situation where we're in the uh, middle of March and uh, spring training doesn't even have started mm -hmm. and they have lost so much time. Well, thanks, Manolo. Appreciate the compliment. Um, again, I'm, I'm excited to get going. Um, there are obviously, as you mentioned, are going to be challenges uh, in this situation that, that we're all in, uh, not just the Oakland Athletics, but every team in baseball is, uh, is in the process of getting their players in as quickly as possible, um, getting on the field, and getting prepared for a season. So those challenges in itself, uh, logistically, um, and getting everyone into spring training, uh, the timing of that uh, impacts how we get started. But uh, I think that we've got everyone on their way and, and are going to hit the ground running uh, with the first workout on, on Monday. Yeah, uh, in uh, this kind of situations, you know, uh, I'm guessing that one of the most important things is having the vision. Yeah, how fortunate do you feel to have right now, you know, well, unless they make trades, the, you have a rotation that looks pretty good, but you have at least five men that would experience starting games in the major league level. Yeah, Manoa, it, it obviously helps to, to have some veterans here in camp. Um, uh, again, I think everyone's in a similar situation with pitching. Uh, you know, we are in constant contact with these guys currently. Uh, we, we know where they're at. Uh, most of, uh, I would say, the majority of guys have maintained their program. They may not be as advanced as they would be if we had started spring training on time, um, but they're really close. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, a credit to, to their work ethic this offseason, the time and energy they spend in, in preparing uh, throughout the, the, the lockout and uh, to come in here ready to possibly – uh, throw a bullpen, throw in live batting practice, and uh, and start games on the 18th. Let's go to Martin Gallegos. Hey, Mark. Um, obviously, um, the roster there there are some guys who maybe could see you know the news and, and see their names possibly floating around and rumors or whatever. Do you approach that with them at all? Do you? I mean, how do you kind of handle something like that? I know every year you know anything can happen, but um, do you kind of make it a point to kind of talk to them? Um, I don't know if kind of talked to them before that. Well, I think, you know, if we deal in the, in the unknown and, and the speculative uh, here in, in, 
in our everyday situation, we lose focus on what's important and that that's getting ready for the season. So uh, obviously my intent uh, and focus as a manager of this ball club is to get all every single individual uh, that's here in camp with us prepared for a season. And I think that's the main focus. And I know, you know, you talked about, you know, being patient while all this was getting worked out, but um, how much are you looking forward to just getting on the field with guys and, and, and seeing workouts actually take place with, you know, your, your guys on the roster and just being able to kind of all be together again on, on the field? Yeah, it's great. We had an a optional workout today with the guys that were working out here in Arizona that could get to the facility. Um, so it was fun. Uh, there were a few guys out here. We took uh, some batting practice, uh, saw a couple bullpens, and uh, ha- had a good successful day with, with the crew that was here. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, guys are flying in today. Guys will be flying in Saturday. Um, you know, we're trying to get uh, prepared for, for that first full squad workout Monday. Go to Alex Simon. Hi, Mark. Alex Simon with Bay Area News Group. I mean, when you got hired, it was in the middle of the lockout. So with a lot of these guys that you've been a coach with for all this time, I imagine, you know, the the lockout kind of restricted you from talking to them. So kind of what was that first conversation with a lot of the guys that you have coached on becoming their manager now? Well, uh, you know, I'm fortunate. I've had a lot of great relationships with a lot of these guys on this roster. So there there was a uh, initial uh, excitement about, um, you know, the decision that was made and, and, you know, announcing that I would be managing them uh, going forward. Obviously, um, you know, we hadn't had that opportunity uh, personally to exchange that, um, you know, conversation. And uh, I'm very thankful that I'm sitting here today. I'm very excited. And, uh, and I hope, and it did come across that uh, a lot of the returning players that I've, I've spoken with already uh, had a level of excitement as well. When you, kind of talk about and Martin kind of asked about potential roster moves obviously usually by the time you get to spring a lot of those get settled there's not really too many trades that happen in spring training is that going to kind of just add to the craziness of this period between the start of spring and the first few days where everything's get that couldn't happen in these last few months is going to have to happen you know Alex I, I still say I think that all 30 teams are in a very similar situation so even though this is my first rodeo uh, you know, leading a club. Um, I think every one of the managers that sit in, uh, in this situation um, have the same issues they're going to be dealing with. Um, there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of variables uh, to go forward with. So I think staying in the moment, staying in the present, um, you know, getting a team prepared uh, for this season um, because it is a shortened spring training uh, is the focus. And then just one quick one. How many guys would you guess, or I guess an estimate of how many you had out today with your optional workout today? You know, Alex, I think we had 11 guys out um, in total. I could be one or two off, um, but it was, it was a good group, group that has been training. They've kept themselves in great shape. Uh, again, I, I watched four guys throw bullpens uh, that looked like they were really sharp. Um, so that's, that's exciting. Uh, I, I expect the guys coming in, um, you know, when we go through physicals, we're like, again, we're having optional workouts Saturday, Sunday with these guys, uh, just to get their feet on the ground, give them opportunity to get out on the field, um, you know, get settled and, uh, and start their routines. Thank you. Let's go to Steve Berman. Hey, Mark, uh, you had a few months there where you had, uh, you know, plenty of time on your hands, but you know, how do you, how did you use that time to prepare for the season, you know, with obviously the fact that you couldn't actually contact your players? Yeah, Steve, there was a lot of time, uh, a lot of anxiety probably that, that was, shouldn't have been there, but, you know, going into it your first time, you, you'd like to have a schedule built. You'd like to have uh, a date, a starting date. And so all those unknowns um, uh, now are behind us. Uh, it does feel good to have dates on the schedule uh, to be able to work a plan that, that we've been preparing as a staff uh, throughout the off season um, over the last two months. And, and speaking of your staff, uh, how do you feel about your coaching staff going in here? And, and uh, specifically, uh, what does Osmus uh, bring to the table for you uh, as a manager? I, I touched briefly on it uh, a few days ago, but you know, Brad, he, he's it's, we joke about his 18 year career because he's one year longer than my 17 year career. So between the two of us, uh, you know, we were blessed with 35 years of major league experience uh, playing at that level. 
Brad's managed for five years, uh, and you know that brings invaluable experience. Uh, someone standing next to me that that's experienced, uh, you know, the, the ups and downs of the season, the, the trials and tribulations that that happen. Um, and he's experienced it firsthand, so that's obviously a bonus for me. Thanks. Let's go to John Shea. Oh, hello, uh, Mark. How are you doing? I'm well, John. How are you? Good, thanks. Congrats on the new job and getting back to work. What a way to start, huh? Yeah, thank you. Um, just, just wondering about your strategy for spring training. It's not six weeks. It's, it's really about three and a half. And is it, is the biggest thing, you know, the, that it'll be like impossible to get starting pitchers ready like normal? And, and if so, how, how do you handle that? It's kind of a, you know, big injury risk perhaps. Yeah, John, obviously you have to take that in consideration, the, the acceleration of, of a program when guys aren't ready. Um, that's why we're in constant you know, discussion with, with guys uh, who are arriving. We've, we've you know, taken advantage of, of the last 24 hours to connect and communicate, to, to understand where they're at, how many pitches they've thrown, if they've thrown to hitters. Um, so we're collecting all that information and, and we're working backwards from you know, opening day, trying to figure out the schedule, how many days we actually have, uh, how many opportunities they're going to have to to get on the mound, uh, to build their pitch count up in a, in a competitive environment. Um, because we all know it's it's different when you're out there and the competitive juices are throwing than, than just throwing on the side uh, to a catcher. So, um, you know, Scott Emerson, our pitching coach, has done this for for 20 plus years. I've got full confidence in him developing that program, uh, and, and and you know increasing their workload uh, to get them ready for a season without, you know, hopefully having the injury issue come into play. And, and when you checked in with the guys, you said like pretty much the whole roster, did anyone ask, did anyone ask you or express any concern about all the trade talk? Because a lot of names out there um, are being thrown around. You know, John, I think everyone's just excited about getting to spring training. Um, you know, and the focus is, is getting prepared for a season for all of these guys. So the distractions, um, you know, granted, are they do exist. Um, I think that as professionals, we come to, to work to prepare for a season uh, to have success uh, in, the, in the long haul. And, and with the rules and regulations going into Toronto and you do that right away in April, what, what's the obstacle? Because they're saying you can't play unless – unless you're vaccinated. And, and is everyone on your coaching staff vaccinated? Well, you, you kind of answered that, John. It, it, there's obstacles. We'll overcome them uh, and we'll tackle them when we get there. But yeah, Toronto is a, is a unique situation with, with the vaccination requirements. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not in knowledge of how many players on the current active roster we have that are not vaccinated. I can ask and, or I can answer and speak for the coaching staff and, and we all are vaccinated. We all are boosted. Um, I think, you know, going forward, we'll, we'll dive a little deeper into uh, the vaccination issues. Uh, but currently, we're, we're really focused on just getting everybody in here, getting the physicals taken care of and, and getting started. Uh, cool. Maybe one more. How, how good can this team be in, in your mind, um, the group you have? I mean, you missed the playoffs last year, but um, contended many years in a row. Is that the goal to contend for a playoff spot or is it too premature? to say that because you don't really know uh, your full roster yet. Well, if you're asking me if I want to contend for a playoff spot, I absolutely do want to contend for a playoff spot. Um, you know, that's why we put the uniform on and we play. Uh, we play to win. Well, thank you. So back to Matt Kawahara. Um, do you know of any players, uh, whether it's uh, visa requirements or anything like that, who you're not expecting to have uh, in camp by Monday? Sitting here right now, I know there could possibly be two players with visa issues. Um, I believe Barrera and Charles are the two players that are, are having some visa issues. Uh, I don't know the depth uh, and I don't know where, where it lies currently, um, but I was told that those two players may be, may be uh, a few days late. And then do you know, um, with Andrews and, uh, and Piscotti coming back from their injuries and surgery, do you know how they're doing? 
Yeah, well, we get to talk to them now. Um, both have progressed nicely. I think Elvis has uh, uh, run the bases on his own uh, during this time, so I think he'll be ready to come to camp uh, and, and hit the ground running, although he is, you know, uh, an older player, um, which I've experienced. He may need a little bit more uh, time before we, we send him into games, um, but we'll talk to him and get his feelings and thoughts on that. Uh, and, and as far as Steven goes, I know Steven's been hitting. Um, he's, he's progressing really nicely. Um, when, when he gets here, I think we'll, we'll test his strengths uh, and assess where he's at and, and, and also talk to him uh, in his comfort level about getting in there uh, and, and starting games as well. And uh, just at the risk of, of kind of repeating a similar, a similar question as before, um, I mean, have you been given, um, are you expecting at this point to have yeah. roster cha changes to the makeup of the roster in the coming days? You know, Matt, um, I'll, I'll say this. I, I'm excited about the group that's here and focused on the group that's here. You know, as a manager, that's, that's really my focus. Um, uh, you know, Billy and I, Billy and David and I, you know, I, I understand that there's there's conversations uh, that began last November. Um, you know, but but my job is really focused on on preparing the, the 58 guys that are going to be in this locker room starting uh, starting Monday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have time for just a couple more. We'll go back to Alex Simon. Yeah, Mark. Obviously, there's a, just one from me here at the moment. There's been quite a few rule changes, even just to how the game is played, that either are going to be implemented going forward or right away. Is there any one that you either in the positive or the negative sense feel particularly passionate about at this point? Yeah, Alex, you know, last night at 11.15, I, I think I got a 20-page memo. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to go through the whole memo yet. Uh, I know, you know just listening to the, to the feeds, that, that the news that's come out, um, you know, I, I'm – in terms of rule changes uh, or – adjustments to the way the game's played uh, going forward. Um, I wouldn't say there's one that I'm, I'm excited about. I could say from a, a baseball mind, um, you know, the discussions of a, a pitch clock, uh, the impact that that will have on, on the game. Um, I know they've, you know, experimented with it in the minor leagues and it doesn't seem to have a huge impact either way uh, from a performance standpoint, or I think, you know, speaking candidly, a, a time of game, uh, you know, standpoint. So um, the larger bases, I, I, I don't really know how that's going to impact the game. I know that uh, you know, their, their thought process is it's going to increase offense, increase stolen bases. Um, but until we really start with those rule changes um, and see the effects, I, I really am, am unbiased to, to how, it, how I reflect on it. All right, two more. We'll go back to Martin Gallegos. Uh, you said you saw a few bullpen sessions. Uh, who, who threw those bullpens, and, and did any of them kind of stick out to you? Did you see anything? Well, first time I've watched uh, Brent Honeywell throw, um, threw the ball well, uh, comes out of his hand well. Um, you know, A.J. Puck was also another bullpen session today. Uh, A.J. looks like he's put on some weight, um, some good weight. He looks really physical, uh, threw the ball great today. Uh, Paul Blackburn uh, also. Uh, you know, through, and there was one more side. Um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, but yeah, there's one more side in there. All right. It was Don Jeffries. There you go. I knew it would come to me. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. All right, we'll finish it up with Manolo. El, um, el Mark, el, uh, is uh, Ramon Laureano one of the players that is already with you there? Uh, he played in the Dominican and won a ball. He still have some games uh, of suspensions to go, but will he be allowed to train with the rest of the group and then uh, leave the stadium? What's the situation with Ramon? Yeah, Ramon will be allowed to, to conduct business as usual in spring training. Uh, obviously, when we break, uh, Ramon will be uh, staying in Arizona to continue his, his workouts. Uh, as you mentioned, he still uh, has 27 games to serve uh, through the suspension. Uh, and, and we'll be excited when, when Ramon returns to us.